All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Geekdom Report here at Geekdom Central. Finally, we're talking about The Last of Us Part 1. Now, unfortunately, because my review is so late compared to when the game released, I'm sure that everyone and their mother has heard what the internet has to say, heard the various opinions about it, and just heard everything. So, obviously, I can just give my thoughts, my impressions, my feelings, and hopefully someone finds them interesting. So, just to do a really high level, kick things off, if... The, the, the primary two questions that surround this game are, is this remake necessary? Is it worth $70? That, every time this game has come up from the moment it was announced, those are kind of the two questions that continue to pop up. And honestly, my answer is no to both of them. I don't think that this remake was necessary, and I don't think that it's worth $70. However, there's still a lot of really, really great stuff here. And I don't think that it should be completely written off, especially if you've never played the PS3 or the PS4 version. But we'll we'll get into all of that. I've got some pretty extensive notes that I had while I played through the game, and we'll just we'll just dig into it. So overall, the kind of the 30 second elevator pitch, I mean even 10 second elevator pitch for this game is The Last of Us One with The Last of Us Two's graphics. There is more there, but if you had to pitch this game in 10 seconds, that's pretty much what it is. Digital Foundry, uh, if you haven't watched or are not familiar with that channel, they do a lot of game analysis videos where they analyze graphics and rendering tech and everything, and they're incredible. They put out an amazing comparison video between this game and the... Well, they, they, they did some comparisons to the, to the PS3 one, but most of the comparisons were on the PS4 version running on the PS4 Pro with the PS4 Pro enhancements. And it's a long video. It's 50 minutes, but honestly, I highly recommend it. It's a really, really great video. Uh, John is the one who did that video, and he just he nailed it. There's so much good stuff there, and I would highly recommend it if you want to get an idea of the changes with this game. And it's actually funny because that video... So ever since they, they announced this game and released the very first trailer, I could tell that it was a pretty substantial upgrade, but especially with the direct side-by-side -side comparison video that, I don't know if it was Naughty Dog or Sony, put out themselves, they picked some of the worst parts of the game, I think, or at least the cutscenes, to show off some of those differences, because some of the stuff that John shows off in that comparison video on Digital Foundry is mind-blowing how much better it looks on PS5, and it just makes you go, why didn't you guys put those parts in the, tra in the trailer that was specifically to showcase the differences, the side-by-sides? Because there are some parts that look phenomenally better, and you could tell that they actually put in some work to make sure that that part could be better, because the majority of this game is a one-for-one -one remake, or at least close enough that it's basically one for one but there are some very very specific spots so one, one of the ones that i think really emphasizes this the most is when you are with henry and sam and you get separated so joel is with sam he's the younger one and ellie's with henry and they're talking kind of through the little bars in this grate and saying okay well we'll make our way through and then we'll meet up somewhere else that part in the original game or the PS4 version really doesn't look that great. And then they kind of redid a little bit and then made sure to, that the lighting was good and everything. And just, it looks so much better on the PS5 version and it's really incredible. And so there's just, there's a lot of stuff like that that makes you question, why did they do that in the comparison video? Especially because one of the biggest differences with this game to the original, and this started with Uncharted 4, is in in Uncharted 4, everything that's done in the game, aside from one or two very select cutscenes, um, is all rendered in real time. So the majority of the cutscenes that you see in the game are being rendered in real time on the console. Whereas with The Last of Us and prior, so the prior Uncharted games and everything, and with the original Last of Us and the PS4 version, the cutscenes are pre-rendered videos. So the fact that they were able to take what already still looks pretty good by today's standards from the PS4 version, take that pre-rendered video, make it look 
a lot better and be running it in real time is pretty impressive. And it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's really cool to see how far technology has come and to see how far it's going to continue going. So anyways, that's enough of an introduction. Let's kind of dive into some of the specifics. Uh, I've got, I've kind of got things broken down into three main sections. I have the things that I liked, things that I didn't like, and then some of the changes I would have liked to see, even though I kind of knew they weren't coming, but it still would have been nice for them to address it. And then we'll go from there. So the, there's, I wrote down a couple of specific instances of specific things in the game that are relatively small things, but showed how they were able to make improvements. So one of one of the things that I thought was really cool that happens at the very beginning of the game is when you're, and I guess I should give a spoiler warning, I'm not going to censor spoilers at all because this game has been out for a long time. So if you're concerned about spoilers, then my quick TLDR to you is I don't think it's worth $70, but I do think it's worth playing, especially if you've never played the game before. So if, you, if you're if you a mega fan of The Last of Us and just, oh, I gotta have it, then you'll probably spend $70 and be happy. But the fact that it's, it's the original game and the DLC, but especially because they didn't include multiplayer and that they're charging $70 for it, I don't love that. So I would wait for a sale and then definitely pick this up over the original PS3 or PS4 one. However... The PS4 version still looks pretty good, and so if that's all that you have access to, that's going to be a lot cheaper, and the PS4 version also comes with the DLC left behind, which is also terrific. So if money's your biggest concern, and especially if you only have a PS4 and you don't know when you're going to get a PS5, I think the PS4 version is still great. Yeah, You're still going to be able to play at 60 frames per second, and you're still going to have a good time. But if you have a PS5, and especially if you've never played the game before, I would wait for a sale, even $30 or $40. I think that that would be a much more appropriate price for this. So that's the TLDR. Let's get into it. So at the very beginning of the game, when you're playing as Sarah, when you get in the Jeep with Joel and Tommy and you're driving away in the original game, and just going forward, when I say original game, I'm meaning the PS3 and PS4 versions because they're essentially the same thing, just with higher frame rates and resolution on PS4. So you can kind of pivot the camera a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, but you can't, that's really it. You can't really look around. And so there's a part where you're driving past a big house that's on fire and you can only, I think at one point it does take control of the camera from you and kind of pan more. But when you're trying to look at it yourself, you can only go to the right so far before you just, the camera won't go any any farther. And so in the PS5 version, they changed it so that you can actually rotate all the way around in the car as Sarah. And so she changes her position on the seat while she's like looking to the side or looking behind her. And it's not like you can only go so far to the right and then have to turn and go all only so far to the left. You can spin all the way around 360 degrees. And so just it's small things like that, that I thought was really cool that, yeah, they didn't have to add that, but it, it makes it feel a bit smoother to me. And it really, I, I, that was, I mean, it's at the very beginning of the game, but it was one of the things that make you go, wow, that's actually kind of cool that they, that they went and added that. So also at the very beginning of the game, I believe that, so this is after you're in a car crash and you're carrying Sarah as Joel. I believe in the original game, you don't ever get in, attacked by infected, or at least I never have. So it's possible that that can happen in the, in the original and I just never encountered it. But now you can, so they'll, don't knock my microphone, so now they'll come up to you and you kind of have to mash square to, you know, kick them away and then Tommy will shoot them and, and everything. But it's another, it's, it's another little thing that just adds a little bit of immersion and makes it feel less like you, you're playing a video game controlling a character and that it's like a pre-scripted story, you know, it, it helps it feel a little bit more dynamic. And so I thought that was kind of cool. One of the, uh, the other example that I have, and again, this might have been only specific to me. So whenever I played the original game, I mainly played on Survivor and Survivor Plus. I did was able to do one grounded run, and then I always wanted to get back and do grounded plus and then just never did. But when you are kind of referencing back to that part where you are split up with Sam in the sewers as Joel, there's a part, so right when you start that, in the original game, the infected behave super weird where... I don't know if it was the original pathing that Naughty Dog did or if my game just always happened to be janked up or maybe it's only specific to Survivor. I don't know. But it 
the infected was just like running these really weird loops. And so you could sit when you're at the part where you're just barely getting control of Joel and you go forward a little bit. So you still haven't been detected by the, by the infected. And there's like one infected that would always, there's a a corridor off to the left-hand side and it would always like kind of run in and look around and then run back. And then after a little bit, it would come back in, look around. And, And it was just like, that was the loop it was on. And then there was another infected that would, run around and go through this corridor off to the right and then come through and it was just like running in a big circle and it was it always just seemed kind of janky to me and it was like what okay this is kind of weird what's going on and so they actually fixed that in uh in this one so they actually added in the stalkers from the last of us 2 and so that entire section takes place with stalkers and i think a couple of clickers instead of just infected which i believe is what it was in the original and so that was one very specific moment from the original game that I had always felt was a little weird and a little off. And so I was happy to see that it was pretty much fixed in this new one because it was always just a little off-putting to me in the in the original game. So from part two, there's, like I mentioned at the beginning, there's this is basically the entire first game redone with The Last of Us 2's graphics. And so the graphics obviously obviously look great. The Last of Us 2 looks phenomenal. And so this is basically looks the same and it looks incredible. But specifically, the facial animations in this game are next level. I've always thought that Naughty Dog's facial animations are pretty good, especially the original Last of Us, especially for the time when it released. Their facial animations are pretty good and they were all done by hand. That's what's amazing is that was before they did facial motion capture where you'll see them with the dots and like the little cameras in front of their faces. They still recorded the actors doing the motion capture for the bodies and then the artists basically had to go in and do all the lip movements by hand. And so the original game's facial animations still look pretty good by today's standards and so they look even more incredible now. But in, in particular, for me, there were two, I mean, all of the NPCs are improved uh, and all of the in-game, the character model, I don't know why I said NPCs, but all of the, the character models and everything are improved. But two characters in particular really stood out to me, and that's Bill and Henry. Bill in particular just looks amazing. He looks so good. And I don't know if it's because... I mean, I don't know why, compared to the first game, he looks so much better than... I hit that microphone again. <laughs> then he looks so much better than the original because all of the characters and all of the character models have received the, the same level of upgrade. But for some reason, for me at least, I think Bill in the PS5 version looks just phenomenal. He looks so good, and his facial animations when he's talking, it's just... It looks amazing. And same with the the character model for Henry. I thought Henry in particular looked really, really good. And it's just, it's it's amazing to take something that still looks pretty good by today's standards and then in the original game and then just crank it up. You know, it looks it looks amazing. But one other thing, particularly from the graphics, that's that I wanted to point out is that the the spores, when you're crawling through areas where there's infected and you have to put on the gas mask, and when if there's like light shining through a window and it highlights all of the dust mites in the air because those are c- kind of the same thing in terms of what you're seeing on the screen both of those look really really amazing um, if i understand correctly the ps5 has some sort of gpu particle system and so that's what they're doing both of these with and so there was more than once where i would just stop and just kind of excuse me where i would stop and just take both of those in because they both look amazing and i was just it's just like, you know, one of those things that makes you stop and just go, wow, like this is really cool. And so those, those were, that was one specific aspect of the improved graphics that I wanted to point out, aside from just the general, like, yeah, everything looks better. So in addition to that, where this is not necessarily graphics related, but will come with the updated, the move to the updated engine and everything, there is the, there's a lot more interactable objects in the environments. There's a point where I can't remember if it's in Pittsburgh or I don't remember exactly where it is, actually. I, I think it's before you meet Sam and Henry. I should have written down exactly when it was, but there's a point where there's a bookstore and there's a bunch of nail bombs that are all set up and then there's enemies patrolling. So you got to go through and clear all of them out. And so those nail bombs 
if you blow them up in the bookstore next to the bookshelves, like books will fly everywhere and the shelves actually exploded and books kind of fell down and just went and kind of fell down. There's a ton of obviously empty office environments and you can, you can knock over the trash cans, the kind of spinny chairs that are in there. You can interact with those and move them. There is, um, I think that's all that I had written down, but there's, there's a lot more interactable. It, the environments aren't destructible. Like you can't blow up, uh, like desks and walls or anything like that, but they're, there's more in the environment that can be interacted with, and that always helps sell immersion for me. One of my favorite parts of Uncharted 4 is in, oh shoot, I want to say chapter 12. I don't know if that's right, but it's when you're in Madagascar and you're in the shootout in this market and you're trying to get to Sam. And so you're like hiding behind these pillars of tiles and the enemies are shooting at you and there's like tiles chipping off the wall and they shoot the sandbags and the sandbags actually get lower and they explode these tables of fruit and fruit like just that kind of stuff is so it does so much to help sell immersion for me and so I don't think this was quite as in-depth as that but it was still really cool to see some increased interactability there where there was less of that in the original game. It's one of those things that takes a lot of work, but when you see it, it's a relatively small thing to do, but it also just, it adds so much. And so I really liked seeing that. I thought that was really cool. Uh, they brought in the the workbenches from The Last of Us 2. So when you walk up to a workbench, it'll actually zoom in and show Joel interacting with the actual gun that you're working on upgrading. And then when you upgrade various parts he might take a part off and put a new part on and things like that um, it was really cool to see that back from the from the second game and as you find the different tools that make it so that you can upgrade guns further those are actually also in a little pouch that's up there in the camera view so the more tools you find the more tools that show up there but then when you upgrade a weapon that requires that tool he'll actually use that tool specifically to do something with the gun and so that was something Overall, something like this workbench system for me, it's it's one of those things that I consider unnecessary in the sense that a feature like that is not going to make or break whether or not I buy a game. And I know that it takes a lot of work to implement something like that. But from a technical standpoint, it's pretty amazing. And I'm I am I, I just really admire and have so much respect for the amount of work that it takes to do something like that. And so it's, it, it's just really cool that they make something that's so interactive and that just probably took a lot of time to do, especially because Naughty Dog is unfortunately known for crunching their studio and crunching their employees, which I don't love. But, I mean, I can't deny that the stuff they, they put out just looks incredible and the amount of interactivity that they have and all of the fine details and everything it's pretty amazing and so I, I really have to pay some respect to the amount of work that implementing something like that would take so uh, we got that another one of the things they brought in from part two was that they brought in the adjustable difficulties so you can either play on all of the original difficulties so easy was it easy normal hard survivor and grounded and then, then they have New Game Plus as well. But you can also do a custom difficulty. So if you wanted to play with all of the settings on Survivor, except for enemy health, or except for this, or except for that, you can adjust individual settings to fit your preference. And I think that that's really neat, because for me, I usually just will pick a difficulty and leave all of them there, because I'm like, eh, I'll just play this difficulty as it was, as it was intended. But... For those that want to be able to adjust that, it's a really great feature to have. And I believe that it can be adjusted adjusted at any time from the menu uh, while you're in the game. So I don't think you have to go back to the main menu to do that, but I actually never tested it. So I'm not entirely positive about that. So if that's not true, I'm sorry. Uh, and then one of the last things that they brought in from part two that I wanted to touch on was that they, they added a really, a, a, a tiny amount of I mean, you don't want to call them Easter eggs, but references to part two, the big one being references to Fedra. I don't remember there being references to Fedra in the original game. So if there are, then that's my bad. And 
I obviously misremembered, but they, so at the beginning, at the very beginning, when you're playing as Joel and you and Tess are going to go into the, you're going to find Robert and then you're going to go through the, the gate and then the truck explodes and you have to run away. That truck in the original game is just a truck, but then in this game, it actually has Fedra on it. And then as you're going through the game, all the various doors that will have the door jams on them that you can't open, those those are Fedra door jams. And so I thought that that was kind of a cool, really minor way to help sell that this takes place in the same universe as the second one, especially because when they made this game, originally, they weren't planning on a second one. And so everything that's in that second game that references the first game could be considered retconning. And so it's it's nice because it kind of helps the, the continuity stay the same between them, especially if you're someone who hasn't played the original game. And so going forward, you play part one and then you play part two. It kind of helps. Oh my gosh, if I hit this thing again, um, it kind of helps keep that, that continuity going. So uh, the last specific thing that I have written down that I liked was, so in general, I don't, fully understand 3d audio i i can hear a difference and especially when you're adjusting the 3d audio and you can pick from the five different settings like i can hear that they sound different but i don't know which ones are considered better and so i don't know what exactly it is that makes 3d audio better i know what they say it is but it's it's hard for me to kind of hear it but one of the things that I did specifically notice is that when you have 3D audio on and you are at a part where Joel has to wear the gas mask because of the spores, his breathing kind of like reverberates in your ear. So if you're actually wearing a gas mask, you would kind of feel that same thing where your your breathing is really loud and it kind of like goes up to your ears because your whole face is, is being covered and stuff. And I felt like they replicated that actually pretty well through the 3D audio because I was playing with uh, with headphones and so that that was one specific thing that I, I thought was like, okay, that's actually pretty cool that they were able to kind of replicate that sound so well. And, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. So that's those are kind of the, the specific things that I liked. Obviously, none of this touches on the original story and the original characters that we all know. I'm sure most of us are familiar by now with the game. Um, if you've never played the game before and you're this far in the review, the original story is phenomenal. There's a reason that it was garnered so many accolades and was named Game of the Year by so many publications. It's it's a really terrific, compelling story. Um, the gameplay does feel a little bit dated compared to Part 2, which I'll get to in my dislike section, but for the most part, the gameplay is still pretty decent. I am definitely a firm advocate, though, of at least playing on hard mode because I think that this game's combat and sneaking and everything really shines when you don't have listening mode because I feel like listening mode is kind of a crutch. And they, they did some work in Part 2 to actually improve that, and I thought that that was actually... A, I wasn't sure how they could improve listening mode to work on higher difficulties, and Part 2 I actually thought did okay at doing that. But especially in this first game... I think that it it should be played without listening mode because it just makes it so much more visceral and so much more riveting and and stuff like that. So some of the other minor improvements that I can kind of think of off the top of my head is there's some new some new kill animations. So like when Joel when it's the last enemy in an encounter and Joel will like throw him down and curb stomp him or like grab him and shove his head into the counter. There's some really cool kill animations with weapons where, especially with like bladed weapons where you get an ax or a little machete, there's some cool kill animations with those. The, oh my gosh, the one that I didn't write down, but if you get killed by a bloater, it's so gross. It's, I mean, I kind of want to explain it for those that haven't seen it, but I also don't want to. So you just go try it or at least look it up by yourself. But it's, you thought it was gross in the first game, they amped it up and made it more disturbing. And so that was one where it's like, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's pretty disgusting. So that was, it was just, it was really interesting to see all the the differences and the updates from, from the original game. So, so now we will get into the, the things that I disliked. Um, unfortunately, the combat arenas are all still the same, which I kind of expected going into the game, but I was hoping when they announced it and they announced that they were bringing over their AI from part two, I had hoped that maybe that would mean that they were going to possibly redesign the combat arenas to take advantage of the new combat 
from part two, but they didn't, unfortunately. So Joel cannot dodge like Ellie can, and he can't go prone. I would have been okay with them leaving out the dodging because it. I remember in some early video they, when they were releasing part two, they said that Ellie could dodge like that because she's like more nimble than Joel is. And so I would have been okay if they'd left that out. But being able to go prone in part two was one of my favorite parts because it really opened up just so many new opportunities. And especially because the levels were designed to take advantage of that. And unfortunately in this you you feel the pain coming back to this one, especially because in part two, you can craft silencers for your guns. You can craft arrows. Not being able to do that is... It, you don't realize how much of an improvement the combat in part two is until you come back to part one, even though this has still been refined. So, like, the, the shooting mechanics are all still brought over from part two. So it's not like it's the exact same combat as part one, but it's close enough. And just the improvements that they left out, because it would have required updates to combat arena level design um unfortunately for me i did feel those and i thought that it it definitely did detract a little bit and so kind of as an extension of this even though this is a really great offering for ps5 and it looks amazing we're still being limited by ps3 level ps3 era level design all of the levels and everything are more or less identical to the original ps3 release and so even though we have all these amazing graphics and all of the interactive physics and everything that they brought over, we're not able to see real... This isn't able to take full, complete advantage of the PS5 because we're still being limited by that PS3 era level design. So I'm really looking forward to Naughty Dog's next game, whatever they do, just to see how they're going to be able to take advantage of it. Speaking about the AI... Unfortunate. I mean, they said that... So, okay. The Last of Us, for me, again, I know that something like AI interactivity is going to be really subjective. It is going to vary from person to person. So this is all just my experience. For me, in the original game, the AI has always been janky. It's... <laughs> it just... Sometimes they act weird. Sometimes they, they do weird things. I guess that's the same thing. But it's... I've always thought that The Last of Us has had some, has had janky AI, and depending on the level that you're in, could also be fairly easily exploitable. And unfortunately, it felt pretty similar here for me too. They said that they were bringing over their AI tech from part two, and I'm sure if I went back and played the original now, I'd probably notice some differences, but for the most part, they're, like the AI still just felt janky to me. They're like some of the things is that when runners are searching for a noise, like so if you throw a brick or a bottle or whatever, they'll just like come running up to it and then just like stop and just kind of sit there for a minute and then just walk away. There are when you're fighting human enemies, there's points where they will, if they're hiding behind a crate or something, They'll just stay there. They don't move. And I don't know if that... It's possible that that's intentional. Maybe they're, like, guarding that position or something. But for me, it always felt strange where I am, especially if I've already killed some of the enemies so that they know I'm there. But then they don't come looking for me. And so I don't know if that's intentional or if that's some weird... Excuse me, if that's some weird jank. But there were things like that that would happen... There are, I've I had times where there were enemies that would immediately know where I am, even though they shouldn't, especially if I would die in a combat account encounter and then restart and it would be like restarting right there. The enemies would know where I am or sometimes they'd be in their like battle combat positions, even though the, the combat music isn't going. So you haven't been detected yet, but they're also kind of like crouched and then doing where they're like, run back and forth between hiding spot like it's it's just it was really weird and it just it felt janky and I know I've said that a bunch but that's it felt the the AI in part two for the most part did feel better and so to me if you had told me that this was the same AI as the first as the original game I would believe you because it to me it still felt just really janky and really and just had like a level of it was like missing a real solid level of polish. And so that it's not game breaking, but it does detract from the experience for me, especially when they are 
just when sometimes they'll get like stuck in a loop running back and forth between specific spots or when they get stuck in their positions and don't move at all or there was there was more than once where i would pop out of hiding and shoot a guy and so it would make the detected noise and they're like oh he's over there behind whatever the thing and then oh sorry i popped my arm and so then i would go back behind cover and i would stay there so i wouldn't move no one would come looking for me and then they'd do the oh man he disappeared have you seen him no nah, man i haven't seen him where'd he go and then they still wouldn't come looking for me <laughs> and so you're like what is going on here? Like, what is happening? So again, I know that that's subjective. It's entirely possible that your experience would not be the same as mine, but that's how mine went. And it, it definitely was frustrating to deal with kind of some of that jank. The uh, the the last main point is that I thought the the haptics and, and adaptive feedback, is that what it's called? That, that doesn't... The, that doesn't sound right. But the, the triggers and the rumble and everything, I thought it was okay. But... In the past, Naughty Dog has always been pretty good at, for the most part, they're not perfect, but they've always been pretty good at utilizing whatever the specific console features are. And the the triggers are there. You can feel it like when you shoot a shotgun or when, when you pull the bow and everything. But it, especially when compared to something like even Ratchet and Clank or especially to Astro's Playroom. Astro's, so I haven't played Returnal yet, but I've heard really good things about the haptics in Returnal. But Astro's Playroom for me is still, has not been beaten in terms of the haptics and the triggers for the PS5. It is incredible what they did on that game. And one thing in, in particular that I remember is that in that game, there's a point where there's rain. And so you can feel all of the, the raindrops on the, on the controller or when you're walking through grass and you can kind of feel the grass swishing um one really cool thing in demon souls is when you are carrying around a torch you can actually feel the fire crackling in the vibrations of the controller like those are all really good examples of some of the the rumble that is really amazing and there was for me at least there was nothing in in this game that even came close to that it was when when the trucks go by and when you start in the generators that one was kind of cool but other than that it was I was just kind of let down. I was I was expect in that arena. I was expecting more from Naughty Dog, and so I was I was a little let down by the, the haptics and the rumble, um, and so one other thing that was just, as far as bugs go, this was pretty bug free for me aside from the janky AI. But there was more than once where, if I got into a weird position and I was turning the camera, it would do that flash where it will like, for just a second you can see behind the level and so you can see like all the blue that's just behind and then you can see like behind everything that you're not supposed to be able to see that happened more than once and so I don't know if I just got unlucky it's entirely possible that I just got unlucky but it happened I would say probably no more than five times so again over a 14 15 hour runtime that's nothing but it's Naughty Dog's games have almost always been synonymous with polish and extremely high quality and so I was surprised to see that happen often enough in a Naughty Dog game. But again, is it, is it possible that I just happened to get extremely unlucky? So those are, that's it for most of the specifics that I disliked. So now uh, just a couple of the things that I would have liked to see, which they, they were pretty upfront that this was going to be more or less a one-for-one -one remake, but I still would have liked to see this is redone combat arenas, like I mentioned when we were talking about that. I would have really, I would again, I would have been okay if they left out the dodging, but I would have really loved to be able to go prone, and if they had redesigned the combat arenas to be able to take advantage of that, because that would have just been just terrific. It would have really allowed the new AI to shine. We could have brought over more of the the combat from part two. I mean, even if they brought in the like the like some of the crafting from Part 2 where you could craft silencers and arrows and stuff, that would have been great. But I also know that bringing in things like that has a massive impact on the game's ammo, ammo and crafting economies, and then you have to rebalance and all that. So I understand why they didn't. It would have I just felt like it would have been nice if they had. Um, the supplement tree as well, I would have liked to see redone because... And this was a problem I had with the original game too. So this isn't unique to part five or part five. Oh my gosh. Part one on PS5 is you have supplements specifically for listening mode. But if you're playing on hard survivor or grounded, that 
item in the supplement tree is literally useless. And so it would have been nice to, at the very least, redo that, replace that with something that... I mean, I don't know what they could have replaced it with, but it would. It, I think it would have been nice if they could have kind of redone the just the whole supplement tree and kind of made that a little bit more so that it's it applies for every difficulty and you don't have some difficulties where it's you have one item on the tree that's literally useless and sure you could argue that oh well obviously just don't spend the supplements on them which I don't but it still is frustrating to have an aspect of this upgrade path that is useless because you're playing on a higher difficulty you know so that would have been nice to see and this last one I don't know how they could have done it but I was I was kind of hoping that they would do something at the very end to better tie that doctor in as Abby's dad and in part two. I don't know how they could have done that because, I mean, Abby wasn't there. So, well, she shows up after Joel kills everyone. But I don't know. I mean, maybe he could have... I mean, I guess when when you think about it, part of the thing in part two is that when she tracks him down, he doesn't know who she is and or why she hates him. And so the doctor couldn't have really done anything to identify himself. But it's, I don't know. Like, it's one of those things. I don't know how they could have done it, but I feel like it would have, they, they could have done, I, I was kind of hoping maybe they would have done something with, because part of the problem that I have with part two and this, I'm going to do my best to not get into a whole part two tangent because I have lots of thoughts about that game, but is that it in this game, they're like, Hey, we have to kill the, the only way to get this stuff off of Ellie's brain is we have to kill her. Like that's the only option. And then in part two, they kind of retcon it a little bit so that the doctor's like, well, there's no guarantee that it'll work, but it's the best choice that we have. So we, we have to do that. And it, just I don't know I felt like there was something there that might have been able to tie it in with part two a little bit more but you know again that's not something I was expecting so it's not that big of a deal that it's not there I think it would have just been nice to see especially because they brought in stuff like Fedra and so it, it might have been cool to hear some background dialogue about like the is it the wolves that are in in Seattle in part two you know just little things like that I felt like would have been kind of cool but it's it's basically a non-issue, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So those are all the major points that I had. So now we can just kind of talk a little bit about, I guess, value and worth. So like I mentioned earlier, I don't think that this remake was necessary. Naughty Dog has said that the reason that they decided to remake it is that it actually started with part two when they did some of the flashbacks to the part to scenes that took place in part one's time. And that's kind of where the the seeds of the idea of planet is like, oh, well, you know, we're kind of recreating this. And then they needed to cut their teeth on the PS5 and kind of get to grips with it anyways, which is funny. That's what they did with the PS4 when they did The Last of Us Remastered. And so I'm totally on board with them kind of learning, getting a, a good run through of the PS5 hardware development pipeline and what better way to do it with a game that you can turn around relatively quickly because you, there's a lot of stuff you don't have to come up with again. You're just redoing what's already there for the PS5. So I get that. But, you know, when you think about it, because the game's not even 10 years old yet, but Demon Souls also was not, was, was about 10 years old-ish when it got a remake. And I actually hadn't realized that initially until I, there were some comments talking about that online. And so I don't know what the good cutoff is for when a game deserves a remake. I know that the internet has a lot of hatred for any sort of remakes and reboots and things. I don't have any problems with developers doing remakes, especially if it's one that has as much work put in as this one does, because there is a lot of work here. They, As far as I understand it, all of the audio is identical from the original game but they redid all of the textures all of the assets all of the in-game models everything and that is not a small amount of work i absolutely respect and admire the amount of work that it takes to do something like that 
and especially with all of the the re, the enhanced facial animations that they did they brought in a lot of animations that they did with part two and then had to make it work with part one so there's there's a lot of work on display here but i still think that the original game held up well enough that this remake was not necessary and that becomes even more evident when you start talking about price because i really don't think that this game is worth 70 dollars there's a lot of like i said there's a lot of really amazing work on display but it is a remake of a game that's not even 10 years old yet and it does not include the multiplayer element if they had included the multiplayer element from the original game i would have much less of a problem with it being 70 dollars but the fact that it's only the campaign, and I I didn't get super into factions, but I actually played a decent amount of it, and it was surprisingly great. It was, for a studio that's known for focusing on their narrative single-player stories, factions had no right being as good as it was. And it was, I know that Naughty Dog is working on the standalone factions multiplayer element, but... For me, I think that they would have been able to negate. So th the problem with The Last of Us is that ever since Part 2 came out, it's almost impossible to have a rational discussion about this game and this series now. So I think they would have had much less blowback and there would have been much less controversy if they hadn't priced it at $70. If they'd priced it at $30, $40, I think most people would have been like, eh, okay, cool. Either I'm going to buy that or I'm not going to. And the nice thing about this is that it doesn't impact the original game at all. This new game is $70 right now, but if you want to go buy The Last of Us Remastered for $10-15, bucks, you can, and no one can take that away from you. That is the one instance where I don't like remakes, is when they delist or remove access to the original game and replace it with the remake, because then you're removing something and i don't like that so this doesn't do anything to impact or remove or get rid of the original ps3 game or the ps4 game which is good but the fact that it's it, it is the entire game and left behind which is good but the fact that they didn't read make any major redesigns in terms of level layout or combat arenas and the fact that they don't include the multiplayer and you know i feel like for me that is enough of a detraction to say that it's not worth 70 dollars. but 30 40 dollars or even cheaper i think it's great especially if you've like i mentioned at the very beginning if you've never played this game before it's obviously a terrific story it's notorious you know for having a really amazing story really great characters and this is objectively the best way to experience the game it looks better than in the kind of worst case it only looks marginally better than the original game but those moments i feel like are pretty few and far between and that really speaks to the strength of the art direction and the design of the original game more than anything that it still can look as good as it does but the fact that in in the best case it really does look generationally different and it looks amazing and they were able to bring over a lot of really cool stuff from part two and it's you know like i've said it's it's obvious that there was a lot of hard work that went into this game but honestly at 70 dollars is it's too much i don't think it's worth 70 dollars, and i don't think that this game needed to be remade at all so that is a review of the last of us part one Definitely, if you're like a mega super fan, then I'm sure you'll enjoy this no matter what, and the $70 will probably be worth it to you. I'm not telling you to not buy it for full price. I'm just saying, for me, I don't really think it's worth it. And I say that as a really big fan of the first game. I have my very complicated thoughts about part two, but I really love the first game. And it's it's just, you know, that's that's a really complex topic. And that debate of how much it should be worth could probably be an entire video of its own. But for me, it would have been worth $70 if they had included factions. I think then it would have been worth $70. Even if they had redesigned the combat arenas and everything, I still think that $70 would be pushing it. But at least at that point, you would have done more work to try and really 
kind of bring more of part two into it. And so you could have made a more compelling argument. But the fact that we're still being limited in so many ways by PS3 era design decisions, it just makes $70 a really, really steep price. So um, like I've said a couple of times already, $30, $40, I think that's a great, great purchase price. And then obviously if you wait till it's even cheaper, then that's a win for you. So there's Last of Us Part 1. Woo, finally got it done. <laughs> um, I don't know what game I'm going to be doing next. I know that in... <clears throat> October, we have, I'm really looking forward to the PC release of Persona 5 Royal, which I won't do a review for the whole game because, I mean, the game's amazing and you should play it, but I'll probably do a review of the PC port and then just kind of talk a little bit about the game and what Royal specifically offers to people who have played the original Persona 5 and who have not played the original Persona 5. But then as we get more into the holiday holiday season, we've got Calypso, Cal, Cal, oh my gosh, Callisto Protocol, you know, and there's there's some really exciting stuff coming up. So plus we've still got House of the Dragon and, and everything like that. So if you've been with me this far, thanks for sticking with it. Uh, it's nice uh, when people watch all the way through and hope you guys enjoyed the review. Catch you guys next time. See ya.